Kara Swisher broke the story for All Things D. So, wow, the reaction to this story has been fierce. On the front pages of the New York Times and the USA Today, mm -hmm. were you surprised by the reaction? No. Hi, I'm Kara Swisher. I'm the co-executive editor of Recode. Kara Swisher is sexy. She scared me a little bit. Scary. She scares me a little bit. Um. The legendary Kara Swisher <laughs> uh, from All Things Digital. Kara Swisher. She's media queen. Kara's been covering the digital scene since uh, the mid-90s. If you're a leader of digital, you've been interviewed by Kara. So Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, the only person to have interviewed them in one together. interview together. Mark Zuckerberg. Do you feel like it's a backlash or do you feel like you're violating people's privacy? Take off the hoodie? No, I never take off it. It's a great moment in internet history. Oh my god, it's like a secret Ooh. cult. <laughs> She's always been entertaining. Kara doesn't really care what you think about her. Does not give a fuck what you think about her. Uh, it's a disease if you let people tell you you're not special. I don't mind not being liked. When you don't care what people think of you, it frees you to do a lot of things. Hey, when does the fun start? I've had more excitement on a bar ride. She is going to tell the unabashed truth, no matter what. Just unabashed, kind of like strength and confidence. Uh, you couldn't afford me. True. Uh... She's so articulate. She's so charismatic. Finally, somebody who will put this white dude in his place. Run him over! Where's the fun in that? <laughs> I want you to jump out of the way. You can't ever take yourself too seriously around Kara. Be inspirational, uh, be aspirational. And I am confrontational, so that's a problem. I mean, she's taking big risks and, you know, she speaks up her mind, in a way, she's funny and smart. What you see first is her drive and her fearlessness. So I, uh, I interviewed uh, President Obama last week and I'm very eager to interview another president. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> it makes you realize. You could live that audaciously and still be okay. <laughs> Kara Swisher is a fucking icon in terms of how she sort of utilizes her recode empire to make sure that the tech industry sort of keeps itself in check. The idea that Google really truly wants to own your identity feels like a threat to Apple. Yes, absolutely. It should be a threat yeah. to perhaps the human race. She's a great mentor. She really helps all those around her. And she encourages us, pushes us, drives us to all be our best. I think it's really important to have people like her that we all look up to. Silicon Valley is typically a straight male dominated population. So having such a high powered lesbian is, is great for our community because it's an inspiration. She just reps us and I'm so thankful and honored that she's a part of our community and that she showed up for Lesbians Who Tech in so many ways. She's probably one of the people that I most look up to. There's nothing to stop you, and if you keep with your genuine instincts of the person you are, I think you have nothing but success ahead of you. Kara, I want more women to feel like they can be you and be successful. Give everybody opportunity, and not just here, but throughout the world. And so I guess, Kara Swisher, I would call you a rule breaker. Badass. She's a badass. Kara Swisher is a total badass. Lesbians Who Tech is proud to present the first ever Badass Award to the one and only Kara Swisher. Lesbians Who Tech, please welcome to the stage Jamie, Rachel, and Dom. Hi. So normally I'm like, I just like wing things, but I really want to like do justice to Kara. So I like in true millennial fashion, I wrote this down. Um, I feel really honored to be up here with my colleagues, Dom and Rachel, and I'm really privileged to call them very close friends as well. Um, we are doing what we can to push the tech industry, um, and it wouldn't be possible without the efforts of people that laid the frameworks before us. So this award that we're presenting to Kara is like, Kara's so deserving of this award in every single way, and I think we're all in agreement, I'm speaking for you, I'm sorry. Um, we're all in agreement that Kara is like just the embodiment of the word badass. Um, she essentially created her own realm in this industry where women are constantly told no. She continues to push her platform to keep Silicon Valley CEOs in check. And if you've ever seen her interviews, you know that she's not afraid to cut through the bullshit. And she has like some sort of verbal sparring magic that has left many a Benioff and Zuckerberg completely speechless. 
Um, <laughs> so I actually had the opportunity to interview her not too long ago, and not only is she just like amazing in every way, but she's so kind and like open and gentle about her like sharing her experiences. Um, so please welcome, oh, and actually, yeah, one more thing. She's really amazing at answering her emails, and if that doesn't make you a badass today, then I really don't know what does. <laughs> so um, please join me in commending and rewarding Kara for this award, the Badass of the Year. <laughs> oh, wow. We wanted to take a shot oh. with you. you want to take a shot yeah, with yeah. Us? yeah. Oh, we're sure. gonna take a shot with Kara okay. Swisher. Okay, here. <laughs> wow, this is happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. here you took hers. You took hers. All right, thank you. <laughs> Oh, whoa. Do you know I totally don't drink? <laughs> Sorry, we just assumed. But I will now. Yes, great. Okay, thank you. Here you go. I'm just going to hold the bottle here and start drinking. <laughs> you know, I always thought I was going to, I don't drink at all, and I thought at about 60, I'm going to start drinking heavily and just saying fuck you to everybody on the street. <laughs> so. so now we're going to have an interview. Are you ready to yeah. hear Kara being interviewed? Yeah. Will you take this? We're going to work. <laughs> Will you take so, this large weapon for I'll, me? I'll Thank hold you. it for you. I'll hold Thank it for you. I'm going to sit down. So how many of you Ooh. have heard of the podcast, Call Your Girlfriend? <laughs> Woo! So we are lucky to have the brilliant, the amazing co-creator cool. of the podcast, Call Your Girlfriend, interview Kara Swisher. Amina, come join us. Woo! And Thank you. Thank you. And we haven't done this yet today. And we have to do this. So I want to start the interview with a slow clap. You ready? You know, wouldn't, wouldn't Leanne make a good cult leader? You're, you're already hijacking my interview. <laughs> yes, you. that's my plan. What's with the glasses? Uh, you know, I wanted to be intimidating and badass like you, so I wore my yeah. most expensive sunnies today. Uh, let me just see if I can help with that. Do you have yours, Kara? Of course. Yes, the Part sunglasses come out. Yeah. It's, the, it's the brand. Everything is about the brand. It is the brand. Well, Kara, every, listen, everybody here is in awe of you. Hmm. You show up to, like, <laughs> it's true. You show up to, like Leanne said earlier, you show up to everything. Do yeah. you sleep? Like, where do you find the time? No, I, I'm a vampire. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I, um, well, you know, why is it so important to you, though? Because... That I show up? Yeah, that you show up um, to all of these, you know, you're, you're yeah. there for the community in like, yeah, really I concrete think, ways. Yeah, I you know, I'm an extraordinarily old person. Uh, and so <laughs> I remember a time when it wasn't very easy to be out, and it was very difficult. And, um, and so I, you know, I really value the ability to... Um, to give back, kind of, of the people that did all the most amazing things really early when it costs a lot to, um, you know, to be gay. And, um, you know, not a lot of, it's hard to remember those times, even now I don't even remember that it was difficult, it seems like everybody loves a gay kind of thing. Um, but it wasn't, definitely was not the case not very long ago, so I think it's really important to stay visible, and it's always been one of my goals is to stay visible. So I guess, like, what's changed? Like, I'm fairly new to Silicon Valley and the Bay yeah. Area, and it's, you know, it's, it seems okay, except that it's very white and yeah. Jewish. But, yeah. you know, like, except what's... For that, ex except, except for except that. Except for that, thing. Mrs. Lincoln, how is the play? You know, what? but I guess, like, what's... <laughs> what do you think has, like, changed substantially for, for women, especially for lesbians? Uh, I don't think anything's changed for women. You know that's my big issue. I mean, I think it's really an appalling situation with the set, when you look at the, the diversity numbers that come out of all these companies, which are supposed to be on the leading edge of tolerance, which they are in a lot of ways, <laughs> um, but 70% men you know, whatever, 70% white. So it's just, it's, it has not, the numbers have not changed and they've gotten worse. Is there any company you think that's doing anything remotely to change this? Like you know, of the I, I think they're all trying. I, you know, I, I, they're, they're very um, sensitive men here in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and so they always, I always saw the story, I, I wrote a story many years ago called The Men and No Women of Facebook. And all I did was put the photos of these, all the, the men, uh, no women of Facebook. This was pre Sheryl Sandberg, who counts for six women, apparently. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I just put them up, and I, Mark Zuckerberg called me. He's like, oh, that really, 
well, that wasn't very nice. And I said, well, look at your friggin' management list. It's all like white guy, white guy, white guy, Asian guy, Indian guy, white guy. You know what I mean? It was like, it was, That's fair. It was pretty much that. And, and I did it many years later about boards of Web 2.0 companies, which many of the Web 2.0 companies were really aimed at women, a lot of these sites like Groupon and many, and many, many others. And all of them had the same breakdown. It was all white, um, all male boards, and it pissed me off. And I, I noted Twitter was one of them. They had 10 literally men within this five-year age range. It was really astonishing to- All names, like all, the same three names. The same three names. They're all- <laughs> they, All I, Jim. I, no, 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 it was all, um, at, at, at Twitter, I, I wrote a story and I said, oh, it's just three Peters and a dick, um, <laughs> which, was, which it was. <laughs> Which it was, which was one of my best lines. That's the benefit to running your own blog. You can do whatever you want. Um, I, couldn't, I could not do that at the Wall Street Journal. Um, I can tell you that. Maybe under Murdoch. Uh, but um, ugh, that guy. Anyway. Uh, and we, like, we won't touch Mur That's Illuminati. Let's, none of us. I, like, we're not going there. Let's, none of us ever touch Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> We're not going there. Love just, his Twitter I totally account. I just had a visual of touching Rupert Murdoch in a sexual way. <laughs> I, um, listen, so, I'm blocking it out. Listen, Kara. Okay. So. okay, I'm sorry. Your point being, <laughs> the point being, they're very, so the guy who was head of Groupon, who later got fired, um, Andrew Mason, who's a very nice guy, um, called me and he said, he goes, Kara, I feel really bad. Like that. Like, I'm like his mother or something like that. And he goes, he goes, I feel bad and I want to do something about it. I said, well, you should have done something in the first place. Like, how did you compile this board in this manner? And he goes, can you help me find women? <laughs> and I was like, I said, I could easily find and women. And you have yeah. binders full of women. I have binders full of women, and it was just... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. They, they, they mean well, and they just, they sit around and mean well, and then they really don't do anything about it. And so it's just the same thing. It's just the same That's thing. fair. And um, my least favorite expression is unconscious bias, which I think there's oh, tell nothing. Us why. Because there's nothing unconscious about it. You know what you're doing. You know? I think, you know, if you're looking across a room at Twitter and there are 10 white men there and you didn't notice, you're a fucking idiot. Like, that's, you know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah. Well, I, maybe this is the year some things will change. I'm not holding my... Yes, we're, yes. <laughs> so it seems so hopeful with the Trump presidency with the assist from... <laughs> We'll figure Chris it out. Chris Christie, like bullies. It's like the season of the bullies and assholes. Sarah, would you ever go into politics? Yes, when are you going to run for I, mayor? I want to run for mayor of San Francisco someday. Someday? Yeah. 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 I do. I do. I mean, I think you would make. I think you would make a great mayor. It's like you know, like what's next for you? You're already a media mogul. Yeah. Everybody's afraid of you. Yeah. Like, what's the next thing? You know, I think. I think mayor would be good. I think mayor would be good. Yeah. Sold. You heard it. You heard yeah. it here first. <laughs> Um, I would have all kinds of weird decrees, though. I'd, I'd have all kinds of What would be things. the weirdest, like, Swisher decree in the you know, Swisher administration? A citywide day you must wear polka dots. Things like that. Like, crazy. Okay. I mean, I think, we can, I think we can live with that here. You know, or I just, I would drive the press crazy, because I know how to drive them crazy. Oh, my God. Well, okay, listen. There's one of the recurring themes today is how mm -hmm. everybody is so supposedly, like, terrified of you. This is true. I see people, like, true. run away from you all the time. They do. But well, the thing is that, you know, I... It's undeniable that you still break the biggest scoops and tell yes. the, the biggest stories. And, um, how, you know, so how do you keep doing that? How do you stay in the good graces of these people, Not I guess? Not their good graces. Well, I mean, you know, but, like, stay, um, stay in the circle enough that you get the information, but then you're still, you, you're still a person of integrity. And well, I think job. they, one good thing about being scary is people think you're going to do something to them, like, if they don't cooperate. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, my grandfather was, I wouldn't say mafia, but nearby. <laughs> adjacent. Mafia adjacent. Adjacent. adjacent okay. Um, and I never forget, he was, he was kind of kept things clear in the streets, and someone did something wrong in the, town, the small town he lived in. And I'll never forget, he goes, he goes to the guy, he goes, you're giving me agita in my stomach. <laughs> I hate having agita. You need to stop doing this the thing. You bully that, you know, all I mean, the tech execs? No, exactly. No, what I do is I think they think I know more than I do, which I kind of do. Um, and so, so they're not really sure where my knowledge is from, and so they, they just give up right from the start. <laughs> they just do. I mean, and I also build relationships. I mean, a lot of reporting, and it's unfortunate what's going on today, is based on... I was, I was mentored at the Washington Post by people like Ben Bradley. I mean, that, that's, there's just no better way to get mentored by, by real journalists 
who really spent a lot of time teaching you how to build sources, how to create relationships, how to think on your own, not be yanked in and as a cheerleader, and at the same time, not be snarky. You know what I mean? Like, really have a real balance. Because I don't like snarkiness. As, well, I'm a little snarky, but, you know, I don't like heavy-duty, in, unintelligent snarkiness. That just is for that re just to be an asshole. And, um, and so I was really trained as a journalist. And I think a lot of people, I think I've said this in an interview, is like, how do you get so many scoops? I work harder than everyone else. I work harder than my little passel of millennials who work for me. I work harder than them. I make more calls. I, I, I just work harder. And that's all it takes. You really do have to be persistent. If you want to be a journalist, you have to be persistent, curious, um, and you have to th think really hard in, in terms of scenarios of what could be happening. Okay, so like zooming out, like, you know, 10-year-old Kara, is yeah. this what you thought you were going to be doing? Um, no, I was going to be the leader of the world at one point, but no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't worry, you know, you're getting there. I started, there. yes. I, you know, I thought about being a lawyer, that which makes is in the same sort of area. Um, I thought about being, um, I, I really wanted to go into the Foreign Service and go into the CIA. I actually went down that road far enough. Um, and one of the issues was they didn't allow gay people in the CIA. You know, there was interviews where they were like, well, you're gay, what if someone finds out? I'm like, but I'm out. And they're like, but what if someone finds out? And I'm like, but I'm out. Like, it was like ridiculous. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, what if you go to Saudi Arabia? I'm like, I don't speak Arabic. Why would you send me there? Are you a fucking idiot? Like, <laughs> We should, we should probably put you in charge of the CIA yeah, at this exactly. point. So I was, you know, like that zero dark 40 lady. I was going to do a lot of that kind of analysis. That's what I hoped to do um, and pretend I was in the State Department. But I was really interested in that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a much more uh, a patriotic person than people realize, even though I'm horrified by it. Would system. you have gone in the military? If I you wanted could have? to. I wanted to. I know that sounds dumb. Besides, just the uniforms alone. But um, <laughs> the, uh, I, my dad uh, was in the military. He was poor in West Virginia. It paid for his medical school. He, um, he, was, uh, he was great. It got him to where he was. He died, unfortunately, when I was very small. But, um, but he, I did want to go in the military, but I didn't want to say I wasn't gay. So I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it, and I wouldn't pretend. I hated don't ask, don't tell. I thought it was the most inane thing. Sorry, Clintons, but it was stupid. You know, um, It was such a compromise. And then when I was, when I finally let gays into the military, I called up and I was too old. I was too old to go in. You have to be a certain age. So I That's couldn't. That's ridiculous. So the, you know, the, the uh, distance between me and my ability to shoot guns is now over. I can't, uh, <laughs> which is a, probably a good thing. I shouldn't have a gun. Um, okay. So, listen, that's debatable. But, Let alone you know, a machine gun. <laughs> it's fine. You know, so switching gears, Kara, a lot of, you know, a lot of people here are really into you. Like, the men are throwing themselves at you, the women are throwing themselves at you. What's the swisher secret to, <laughs> to keeping it hot and sexy I mean, all these years? You know, that is an unusual way to ask for a date, but I'm taken. Listen. <laughs> Uh, I think we can still work something out. Okay. okay. Um, I, I don't know what to say about that. I think I've been very lucky in love over my life, and I am now currently. And so um, I don't know what it is. I think I've, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it helps to be like a powerful. I'm really good in bed, person. Amina. What do you want me to say? <laughs> well, I am. Let's be honest. Um. <laughs> Um, I think it surprises people sometimes. Um, so ev everybody here has been talking about Scandal. What do you watch? What's, I watch like, Scandal. What's on your? I what's love on Carrie the DVR? Washington. I watch Scandal. Um, I watch Game of Thrones. Uh, the typical things. Um, I watch uh, House of Cards. Okay. Um, which is coming March fourth. March fourth. Um, I I like I like shoot 'em up movies. I am so excited for London is falling after Olympus is falling. Sold. Okay. Um, I just took seven boys. I have two sons, and I took them and their friends to see Deadpool, which is probably an unfortunate parental decision. <laughs> But you know what? It was fucking funny, so whatever. Again, like, where do you find the time? I just, this, you know, I yeah. think that this will be, this is like the mystery for the ages. I don't read me. books anymore. I used to read a lot more books. I spent a lot of time on my iPhone reading on, and stuff like that. I, I really enjoy uh, the internet quite a bit. It's been um, good to me. I watched you interview Joanna Coles for yes. Cosmo, and oh, no. she was saying this mumbo jumbo about how when you read a physical thing of paper, yeah. you. Supposedly, like, it, it has meaning. I, I really hate format fetishists. Yeah. I don't, you know, I get, like, one, I think I get one newspaper, and I'm really into it. Yeah. But are you... Which one? Is, um, Sunday Times, hello. Oh, okay. it's the, that's okay. the one. Sorry. Ooh. The magazine. 
Um, but, you know, so is that something that you, like, where are you at in your media diet? Are you more uh, of a I digital don't read, I don't read any person? paper. I haven't read paper for years and years. I mean, years ago, I think I wrote a story in the Wall Street Journal that I cannot pick up a paper, which was not the thing you write in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I also did one called Cutting the Cord. This was in the early 90s, when I first got there in the mid-90s, about not ever having a landline. Um, so I have been digital for a long, long time. At the Washington Post, they had a suitcase cell phone there, um, only one. Um, and they were testing them out, and I got it. I took it, and I ran around carrying this, like, like it's a miracle I ever dated, but um, I, <laughs> I had the suitcase phone. I'd be like, carry it around and call in my car and things like that, and, and, I, and I would say to people in the newsroom, I, I, was, I think I've been prescient about a couple things. This was one of them, and I said, someday this is going to be small. This is going to be in your pocket. You're not going to have a phone on your desk. You know, I mean, I really was, but they were like, shut up, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so the same thing was the same thing with uh, with newspapers. The minute it became digital, um, I happened to be at um, at a fellowship at Duke University. It was a teacher's teaching fellowship. The Washington Post had so reporters came in and out and taught people things, which is always funny. Reporters teaching people things, but in any case, um, I was using their I was using the Nets, I got to use the Netscape browser, which was Mosaic browser at the time, and I used it. I know it was amazing. Um, I actually met Mark Andreessen when he was very young. And he's still, he's still a big baby. Uh, so um, <laughs> I'm, having lunch with, I'm having lunch with him Tuesday. I'm thinking of bringing Indian food. What do you think? Right? That's what I'm doing. You, anyone who knows what he tweeted, that appalling tweet that he did, will know what I mean. Um, so um, back to Netscape. Anyway, I was using the Mosaic browser, and I was yeah. on the Duke system. And I, I downloaded all of this Calvin and Hobbes book. And I messed up, the, um, I messed up the, the whole system. It was like they were so upset because it was a lot of images. But at the time, everything was super slow. I mean, it's astonishing how, much, how quickly we've come. And so I messed up the whole system. And these guys were like, these geeky guys were like, can you believe what you just did? You just messed up this. And I said, I downloaded a book. And they're like, but you messed up this. And I said, but I downloaded a book. And I kept like, it was the most crazy situation. And they're like, but you, 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 you and I, I said, I downloaded a book. Been, Don't you understand? You've like, always I been like, on the forefront of No, the and then, of course, I'm the only person who hasn't benefited from it. So I'm like literally the stupidest person in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Listen, I, I have had job offers from every major internet company, and I took none of them. Would you, ta would you take one? Now? It's stupid. I missed everything. I missed all the money. No. I mean, uh, you, I, mean I think you did okay for yourself, I though. did fine. I just sometimes I'm like thinking, the guy, Ted Leonsis, who's Jeff Bezos offered me a job very early, uh, every company, and I keep thinking, right now, I, I love my career, and I love what I've done. I love the people we're employing. I love my employees and, everything, and what we've made. And um, I, I do think, though, I would have liked that billion dollars right about now. Like, you know, or not billion, like several billion, because I would like become the Koch brothers of the left, and I just fuck with the right wing like crazy. So, I'd like that money. Well, so what advice would you give to anybody who is thinking about coming into tech if they're not like a rich white dude or you know blessed like you are? Is well, there? Do you think that there's still space for people yes, to come yes, into the city the and fastest, make things? It, it, you know, of all the industries in our country, it's the most, uh, it is the most open. I mean, there's a lot of things. They, they do mean well, it's, it, even though it has the same results, so I'm not sure what, how to think about that. It still remains the place of, and, and especially in this country, it remains a place of innovation, change, willingness to fail. Those things are not fakeries, although sometimes they talk about them the way they are. When they have an abject failure, they go, well, I meant to do that. You know what I mean? Like, like nice to meet you, Yahoo, kind of thing. But, um, but they... Seriously, they've been failing for a decade now. So <laughs> it's like, I always say, watch, yeah, I was like watching someone fa willfully throw themselves down the stairs. You're like, <laughs> should I stop them or should I? This is so entertaining watching. Like, they, I mean, <laughs> listen, we're all enjoying reading you, writing about them, so it's fine. Kara, have you failed at anything? Yes, lots of things. What, like, what's one thing you can tell us about? Oh, let's think. Oh, you sold chip witches once. Do you remember chip witches? No, you don't. You're too young. No, I don't uh, know what chip witches. Uh, they were an ice cream, <laughs> and I was really bad. I sold them on the corner when I was in college at Georgetown, um, and I was just the worst. I was the worst sale. I'm a terrible salesman. So this salesman. is like your one failure in life. It's no, like way no. back when, when you were at Georgetown. <laughs> um, no, I um, uh, yes, it was because I, I I was just bad at sales. <laughs> I was bad at sales. I was bad. I was like, I, you have to be nice to be a salesperson, you know? <laughs> and their, their little line was, put these chips between your lips. I'll never remember that. And I'm like, I'm not fucking saying that. <laughs> um, and I was just, I was like, just buy one, you fat, you ugly, yeah. <laughs> well, it worked out well for everyone. No, it just was, um, you know, I think I really, um, 
every time I think I've failed is when I wasn't um, uh, straightforward enough and, and outspoken enough, when I've not spoken. And I, there's lots of times when I've kept it, to, even if you can't believe it, I, there's lots of times when I've kept it to myself. And I think not coming out earlier was something I should have done. I think I was, it was too late. It, was, it should have been very early, even though it had a lot of price to pay. Um, I think not speaking up, uh, anytime I don't speak up, I always regret it. Like, but I, I tend to do it. I mean, I was at a, at a Silicon Valley dinner with all these VCs, very rich, and it was during the whole mar marriage thing going on, and there was a conversation at the table, and um, this guy, this old, I'm not going to name him, but he's really well known. Um, <laughs> such an asshole. So, um, <laughs> so he goes, he goes, I don't know if I like this gay marriage thing, and I don't like, I, and of course he did the, uh, lesbians together is okay, you know, that thing, like, uh, are you fucking kidding me? And so he goes, I don't know if I like this gay marriage thing, I mean, I don't like the idea of two men having, I, I, don't, I don't like two men having sex, right? I don't like asshole. men having sex, I don't like men having, something like that. And so everyone just let him do it, and I go, you know what, if you don't like men having sex, you need to stop doing it. <laughs> and he said, and he goes, I'm never forget this, he goes, I didn't say I had sex. I said, no, you said you don't like it. So if you don't like it, you obviously had sex with a man, and therefore you don't like it. Why are you doing it? That's so and then I just kept going with this guy, and I'm like, for example, if you look on my plate, zucchini. I hate zucchini. I don't fucking eat it. Like, if you don't like having sex with men, you need to stop right now. Like, <laughs> And he was like, he was like turning that red that old white men turn. And, <laughs> and he goes, I didn't say that I had sex with men. I said, well, why are you lying to the group about gay sex? Like, what is that? Like, like I don't understand it. Right, it's like, who asked you? It was so good. It's a great one. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get opportunity. I, I do not regret that. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're so happy that you get to be in spaces that we yeah. You can't go to and you yeah. speak up for us. You can go to them. That's not true. Well, you know, one day. Like, one we... day I'll be an important media mogul, no, too. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, that's the thing. The internet has, has really leveled things a lot. Anyone can speak. Anyone can do things. You can't use the excuse that you're not in there as not. That's there fair. is any moment in your life that you can stand up to things. And I think right now I'm on the peer review committee about this uh, SB Nation story, this terrible story about the... Uh, Guy who raped a serial rapist of a, 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 he, he targeted Daniel Holtzclaw in yeah he targeted uh, poor African American women and just it's just he was absolutely and justifiably convicted and there was a story in the SB Nation that was um, sympathetic to him <laughs> astonishingly they took it down apologized and stuff and I'm in the middle of this and I can't talk about uh, I'm I'm in the peer review they always like pull me into a peer group something like this because we're gonna to be tough on, on what happened inside the company, inside this particular website, which is a, usually a terrific website. And um, one of the things that I've noticed, and I can't talk specific about it, was that everybody, everyone had a feeling that it was bad. And but nobody spoke out. Very few people. And they, but they felt bad about it. And so it was sort of, I, I, you don't wanna blame those people for not speaking up, because why should they have to? And at the same time, I don't know if it would have, like the one person who did speak up who happened to be uh, an African, there's a story in Deadspin today you should read, there's an African American editor, woman editor there. Um, she kept speaking up and it didn't matter. You know what I mean? It didn't stop it, didn't stop this train from going. And so I always thought like, two parts of me was like, she wasn't able to get what she wanted, but that she did speak up was the right thing. At the same time, why should she be the one that has to speak up? Why couldn't all these other white male editors see the problem right away? You know what I mean? So. You know. So, I guess, yeah, I mean, you, you are fairly outspoken. It's a thing that, you know, I think for a lot of young women, that's, a, that's something that they're having to constantly renegotiate. Yeah. It's like, how brave can you be yeah. in the workplace? And, well, you can be. And there's so much literature that's geared at us towards that, right? Oh, it's absolutely. Like, lean in, lean out, do, do uh, this and that. But, get, and I talked to a woman just the other day, at, uh, a working woman, she, she had some issues around, you know, kind of dude speak in the workplace. And, and was relating this to me, and then said, I don't know, Kara, maybe I'm too sensitive. Which, and I was like, shut the fuck up. Like, don't say that. Like, yeah. And she's like, well, maybe I'm too sensitive. I'm like, you're not too sensitive. It smells bad, it is bad. Stop, you know what I mean? Like, don't, that's what women tend to self-edit themselves. And I think they, um, I think the thing that really drives me crazy is, you know, whenever people ask me for advice, especially women in tech often come to me and ask for advice, um, 
I always, I, I think of this woman who was a very prominent, very, another very big name who was leaving a company and trying to figure out what to do next. And she had um, several offers. And she came to me and she, always, she goes, I've got this offer, I've got this offer, I've got this offer. What do you think I should do? And I said, well, what do you want to do? And she said, oh, this is interesting. I go, no, 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 not these offers. This is coming over the transom. What do you want to do? What is, what is, the, what is the, the kind of thing you want to create in your life? And she goes, well, this thing. And I said, stop waiting for people to give you things. Take what you want. And I think women uh, tend to like, self-edit themselves a lot. And it's not, um, and it, I, you know, I have two sons. And believe me, I've ne I now understand privilege, like how they, <laughs> that they completely think the world is their oyster. And I don't think, I've tried very hard to make them insecure, and it's not working. Um, <laughs> but um, they really have this weird, penile confidence that is really hard to shake. And, you know, I, I sometimes, I, I would have liked, I wish, there's a regret, I wish I had a girl. Like, it, it was, it, to raise one. And because it was, it's sort of fascinating to watch the self-editing that goes on. And again, it's not women's fault. They shouldn't have to behave like this. But, you know, it doesn't change until we start to grab, to take what's ours. And I think one of the things I think I've done really well, and I give this advice to all you, is um, I, uh, I always ask for tons of money. Like whenever I'm doing something, I know it sounds dumb, but when I was negotiating with one of these, uh, the deal, the, the Vox deal, uh, the guy who runs Vox is astonishing, G uh, Jim Bankoff, and he was, I wanted more money, he wanted to give me less money. This is typical in a negotiation. And he goes, he's such a nice guy, he really is, and he's a wonderful person to work with. And he goes, come on, Kara, we're friends. Like that thing. You know that yeah, one? Yeah, Bob. And I said, you know, I super, super love you, but give me the fucking money. Like, you know, kind of the, and, and he laughed and gave me the fucking money. Uh, but, um, but I think that we have to really, um, you just, unfortunately, when people are shy and, and, and they don't, it, it would be great to live in a world where you could be the person you are. If you're shy, you don't have to be aggressive. And aggression and obnoxiousness have really worked for me. Um, but, but we're not in that world right now. And I think we have to stop letting you know, when Donald Trump, this, oh, God, this guy, um, <laughs> when he's, like, saying things, we, we laugh at it, and we, you know what I mean? We, like, we don't say this is appalling. I use Twitter a lot to, like, you know, that fucking troll, and this and that, and um, I don't think people, you know, we have to speak up, especially right now in this political culture. It's really dangerous what's happening, and one of the things that sort of drove me crazy, and I, I am a supporter of Hillary Clinton, though, when she went on, um, uh, I like the burn, too. I get, I get it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, um, but she was on a, I guess, Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. And she was saying, you know, I, I, she goes, I guess he had just done the Muslim thing, which we thought was the edge, but it apparently wasn't, um, that he would fall off of. And, um, and he said the Muslim thing. And she goes, she goes, now it's not funny. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. word she said. And I, I wrote a note. I, I know them. And I sent it to the Clinton, Mr. Clinton people. And I go, oh, so the, the, the Mexican rapist, the disabled the women, that was funny, and this, like this is the new line. This is the new line. I was like, none of it was funny, and you all should have been saying something right at the start. And so, now it's too late. So, uh, and well, okay. okay. Last question for you, since we're still talking about politics. Although I hate to say this, I kind of like Ivanka. You like, well, it's true. I can't she's, help She's me. a successful business lady. She, I what, guess, you know? well, yeah, when you start. And we can all be, we're all embarrassed by our family members. Do you know what? When it's you start true. on third base, you tend to get to home rather than <laughs> Well, listen, I want to end on a question about Hillary Clinton. I'm okay. also a Hillary Clinton supporter. A lot of my friends are, you know, feel the burn. I respect it. I yeah. get it. What is it about Hillary that is so compelling? Why, why should this be her year? Uh, I'm not sure it's so compelling. That's the problem, unfortunately. Uh, I think Bernie Sanders is compelling um, to a lot of people. Um, uh, I have people I live with who like Bernie Sanders. We have an issue over that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but um, I, you know, I think the problem is she's a flawed candidate away from her being a woman. I think she's probably, that's the difficulty she's going to face is that, and I think a lot of it is sexist. Not all of it, for sure. Not all of it. There's definitely stuff that, uh, that they have done that needs to be examined. But uh, you, when you notice, like, and I love, again, I love the New York Times, but there was one story, every time she had a hangnail, they wrote a story about, like, her. It was fascinating. And I kept saying, when are we going to see the stories on adorable Bernie Sanders that don't have to do with his comb over? You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about his, the same thing with Trump. You know, they had all these sort of attacks and all the other candidates. They, they went after Christie, which I don't mind in any way, but, um, and Jeb Bush and others, but they never, they have not written serious stories, and I love the New York Times, so it pisses me off, serious stories about, um, about Trump and his finances and his claims and everything else. Not a serious, tough story. 
And it, you know, it's all funny, funny stuff with him. And so I think, you know, I think the problem with Hillary Clinton is she's, she, there's the sexist stuff that goes on. There's uh, her own history, which is problematic. There's, uh, there's weariness about her. People, people are in a rage right now, both on the left and the right. And I'm not sure a candidate like her, I don't know what she could do. It's gonna be a really tough election because people do want change, but not in the Barack Obama way. They wanna do it in the fear way. It's a fear election. Um, and, and even though hope tends to be a better election, we're not there. Today, it's fear. And so in those cases, you get populists and uh, angry people and that tends to work, and it's really sad. Well, maybe we'll still Sorry, get a, that's maybe, a bummer. I know, that's like a bummer to end on, but maybe, no, we'll, no. maybe we'll get a lady no. president in our lifetime. No, so I, think, I think she should, I think she, sh uh, she certainly has worked her ass off to get there, but um, she certainly is deserving and is very qualified, and I'm gonna put all my support to her. And it may be cynical, but we should back her because she's probably the one who could win. So that's, I, that's unfortunately cynical. But, um, and I like, don't worry, Kara. When you run for mayor of San Francisco, we'll all be there for okay, you. Okay, good. Thank you good. so Thank much. Thank you so for much. Thank us. you.